So the mole, what is it? The mole is a unit of measure for an amount of chemical substance. It doesn't me it's not a measure of mass. It's a measure, it's a number of particles. It's a counting unit like a dozen. So mole, the unit name is spelled M-O-L-E. The abbreviation is M-O-L, which I personally think is a little ridiculous, but they didn't ask me, right? So if you see M-O-L, that stands for mole. So one mole is equal to Avogadro's number of particles. They could be molecules, they could be ions, they could be atoms. You could talk about Avogadro's number of softballs. You could have a mole of softballs. So that's going to occupy the volume of the earth. That's going to be a lot of softballs. But it's a counting unit. It's a number of things. It could be anything. So one mole is Avogadro's number of particles. It's kind of unfortunate that we didn't talk about this last week because we missed mole day. Last Thursday was mole day, and, and you guys didn't know about it, so I'm sorry you missed your first mole day. 10-23, October 23rd, 10 to the 23rd. So that's the chemist's holiday, right? The Star Trek fans have May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Yes, Star Wars. Oh, good grief. I knew that. Star Wars. And, and the mathematicians have Pi Day. March 14th is Pi Day. 3.14. So chemists have Mole Day. And I just have to tell you a personal story about Mole Day. My husband is also a chemist. He works here as well. And um, our fourth son was born on Mole Day. And it was just the awesomest thing ever. And what's even better is he weighed 10 pounds, and he was 23 and a half inches long. So he was 1023 on 1023. The only thing that could have made it more perfect is if he'd been born at 602. Yeah, you can't really control that. I gave it a shot. It just, you know, didn't work out. So it was more like 830. We seriously, well, not seriously, we actually had a discussion should we give him the middle name Avogadro? It lasted about 30 seconds. We said, no, no, we couldn't do that to him. So we didn't. So, but anyway, he's our mole baby. So a mole is Avogadro's number of particles. And this relationship allows us to convert between number of particles and mass of substance. This illustration here is giving you an idea of how much a mole is. So this balloon contains one mole of oxygen. This little graduated cylinder contains one mole of water, and this watch glass has one mole of sodium chloride. So a mole of chemical substances is a reasonable amount. It's not like a semi-truck full, and it's not so small that you can't see it. It's large enough that we can actually deal with it, and so that helps it to be a convenient unit. Oh, let's go back to this. So this is an important thing to remember. One mole equals this many particles. That's a unit equation, and we use that as a conversion factor. If we have the number of particles, we can figure out how many moles. If we have the number of moles, we can figure out how many particles. So let's do a couple examples. Uh, this first one, calculate the number of molecules in 0 0.763 moles of chlorine gas. So the unit we're given is mole. This is dimensional analysis again. And I know some of you have a hard time with that. Now is the time to get that figured out, OK? Now is the time, because this chapter is going to use it a lot. So the unit that we're given is mole. And what are they asking us to find? The number of molecules. So we're starting with moles, and we're going to figure out the number of molecules. See, this is what I don't understand. There's no accepted abbreviation for molecule. That's a long word. And yet there's an abbreviation for mole, which is a little tiny short word. I would have chosen mole for molecule, the M-O-L, but the, again, they didn't ask me. So here's the number of moles, and here's the molecules. Do we know a relationship between moles and numbers of molecules? It's on the previous slide, right? Avogadro's number. 
So we can do this in one step, and we write down 0 0.0763 moles. And there, a path is moles to molecules, one step, so we have one fraction. And this is our path, moles to molecules. These are the units in the numerators. So molecules, oh, that pesky train. And the units cancel out. We get all of our units in place first, and then we put in numbers. Where do we put Avogadro's number? With the number of molecules or the number of moles? With molecules. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power is equal to one mole. Sometimes students get confused and they get the numbers backwards. Think of it as dozen. A dozen donuts is 12 donuts, right? Mole is the chemist's dozen. So it's one mole is a number of particles. So then you need your calculator for this. I wasn't thinking. I think I left, I think I left mine in my office. Yep, that was bad. I have to get out the cell phone. Cell phone calculators are not the greatest for this. 0 0.0763 times... And make sure that you're using the scientific notation correctly on your calculator. You need to be using the EE button or the EXP button. So times 6.02 EE23. EE does times 10 to the for you. And we come up with an answer that is a very big number. We're going to see some really big numbers. Um, both of these numbers have three significant figures, so I'm going to report my answer with three significant figures. 4.59 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. Any questions about that one? Yes? So that, that conversion factor, is that exact or is that... It is not exact. It is not exact. We know it to more decimal places, but this is what your book uses, so it's what I'm going to use. I, I happen to remember that it's at least 6.022. I don't remember the digits after that, but it is not an exact number. Any other questions? So that's going one direction. Let's look at the second one. Calculate the number of moles of copper in this many atoms of copper. So here we're given atoms and we're asked for moles. So we're going to convert atoms to moles. So we write down the number of atoms, 5.34 times 10 to the 25th atoms. And then we put the units in. This time we're going to have moles on top because this is our path, atoms to moles, and so this follows here, atoms to moles. And then atoms will go on the bottom because that's the unit that we want to cancel out. The relationship between a number of particles, atoms, ions, molecules, and a mole is Avogadro's number. Do I put that in the numerator or the denominator? In the denominator, because this is the dozen unit some lag in my thing here. It's not working very well. Hmm. One mole, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Now do this on your calculator to make sure that your calculator is behaving correctly. Because we know that calculators can be squirrely sometimes. 5.34 EE25 divided by 6.02 EE23 equals, each of these numbers has three significant figures, so my answer will have three, 88.7 moles of copper. Probably should have put a box around this one. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. The same thing. 
because it's a counting unit. And just like a dozen donuts is 12 donuts, and a dozen people is 12 people, and a dozen cars is 12 cars. So a mole is a particular number of things. We don't care what the thing is. So you don't say moles of atoms or moles of molecules? You don't have to, no. You could. Well, we have context here. Calculate the number of moles of copper. Um, copper is an atomic element, and so this will be moles of atoms. Uh, we wouldn't say molecules, moles of molecules, because it isn't molecules. But we know that by looking at what the substance is. You had a question? Okay, so what happened is when, so you ended up with a really big number, right? Mm -hmm. What happened is when you entered the scientific notation, um, you probably did something other than using the EE button. And then your calculator divided by 6.02, but it multiplied by 10 to the 23rd. So you need to make sure that you use the EE button. Does your calculator have one? Yeah. Yeah. So try it again and see if you can get this answer, Okay. And if not, see me during the break, and I'll, I'll have a word with your calculator. It's your calculator's fault, isn't it? It's not your fault. Any other questions?